hello everyone so I have this small 6x6 full flush cave door it is 672 blocks the small as well slime box and yep let's see Close. so it closes in about 7 seconds and let's see open it So it opens like one or two seconds longer. Actually, the opening should be seven seconds. I can't really re remember, but whatever. Uh, so I'm going to do a tutorial on this, and uh, I did a an explanation video with Quipla before, but then I do left out a bit of some of the details, and I would explain it in this video as well. So let's get building. So these are the uh, resources you would need. Uh, you can pause the video and take a screenshot of it if you need to. Uh, these are the normal blocks and these are uh, gravity affecting blocks. You need two of them. Uh, they can be sand, gravel or concrete powder. I would like to use them. So yeah. uh, this door works in uh, from 1.11. So if you are if you are to build it in one point eleven, so then you would need sand or gravel, and you can reuse concrete powder. So and also these are the items you would need: four stackable items, uh, two kinds of uh items that stack up to sixteen. Uh, one uh two, one i one kind is. One kind of the item, uh, you need two of them, and the other kind you need twelve of them, and twelve snowballs and two ender pearls will be used for the video, and fourteen items, normal items stack up to sixty four. Uh, most of these are going to you be used in hopper clocks. Uh, only two of them, two of the normal items will be used in drop hopper. So you need a twelve long. 14 high and 4 wide space to work with from uh, the left and from the right of the this block you need 2 blocks to work with and from the ceiling from the block from the floor you need 3 blocks to work with so, yeah. so we're going to build the piston layout get some sticky pistons and a service now the bottom is a triple piston extender with observer pushes here same for the top but without the observer pushes For the bottom and for the top, exactly the same actually, just mirrored. You need four doubles and four singles. So remove these and place your single piston extenders here. There we go. Exactly the same for the top, just mirrored. And for the sides, uh, it's quite interesting. So first off, uh, the basic part, two doubles, two singles, right here. And then you have more side pistons right here. Now you might be thinking, uh, what these pistons going to be used for and uh, the reason behind it is actually 
very simple. So uh, this is a four wide six by six cave door, and it's, uh, usually for five by five and for six by six cave doors, you would need a five wide space because of this block here. But then you see it's quite redundant, like you only have a single piece of leather here, and it's really quite useless. So instead, uh, we use a piston that's going to push this block out. And it fits in a four wide space. So it makes the door smaller and it also makes it full flush, which is quite cool. But then you will realize that you need to get the piston out, and uh, you can use some conventional layout like this. Like for a bottom, you can have this, and for the top, you can have this. But there is a problem with this, is, and is that the top actually is fine, but then the bottom is quite hard, quite challenging. And the reason why is because you can see the bottom, you still have these observer pushes to deal with, and these are actually quite hard, not gonna lie. And you basically need a lot of space to, for the bottom. And in fact, there's an essential circuit. Uh, in this door in which this layout couldn't work with so I'm going to explain that later so instead of getting these pistons from the top and from the bottom we're going to get it from the side because the side is actually not that hard and even adding some pistons here is not that hard but you will see that the side only has two blocks so it can fit the double in like along with the piston so we're going to do is going to have a folder double right here. Now it looks strange, but uh, it's actually quite simple. So let me show you how it works. So after, oops, no, not like that. After retracting this block, uh, we're going to accept this piston, then we're going to retract this. Extend this piston and then extend this back, and then we can have extra holes here. This will be useful for later. And then just push this block back. This is also be useful for later. You can see a sequence in it. So basically, this first, and then this here, and then this here, and then you pulse it in here, and then you pulse it back. So this acts as a sing side single and also for the folder double, which is quite neat. So the same thing for the other side. It is also exactly the same for the top. The side double is still folded. And the configuration is exactly the same, except for the top piston. This layout is basically finished, so we can start with the input. I'm going to get the wall here. So the input is going to be here. It's going to be a repeated input. It can be a dust input because it's going to redirect the dust if you can if you can do it. And it's going to have the dust here. Now the first thing we want to do is to two things, just these bottom pistons. Now the way I do it is quite simple, actually. And for this here, I'm going to have a piston here. For this here, I'm going to have a piston here. And two observers here. This is going to one ticket, and of course we don't want to one ticket. So we're going to have these sticky pistons. It's going to be useful for the hover clocks later. And two observers here. This is going to generate two tick. So that's it. 
You might be thinking, since this piston can be used, why can't you, uh, I mean, can you use a no block on shotgun here? And the answer is no, because uh, this is related to the input bug, where if you power, like in this situation, if you were to power it directly through a lever, then it would not work because of the input bug. It would actually one tick this piston. If it were two tick this piston, it, it would one tick this piston, which we don't want. And so yeah. So we just need to have a piston there, and it will work. Now for the hovercock, we use some blocks that comes over here. Then of course we need our hopper. So our hopper is going to be here. Screw that. So we going, I'm going to get the items from here. This is convenient. We want one item here. Uh, stack up, stack up to 60 and then four items here normal items stack up to 64 and then four more items stack up to 60 here you need to have this configuration uh, because of the precise timings uh, for a hopper, for a hopper to give a stable strength of two you need 23 items but in here you can see it's actually you need there is 24 items is equi is equivalent to 24 items at least now the reason for having this configuration is basically just to add one more item so that uh, there is enough delay for uh, this piston actually. You'll see why. So we're going to have a thing like this. And actually I just realized I should place these items here. Uh, it's important that it's in, it is inverted, actually, because we're going to have a circulator that would power something else, important. Dusty and dusty. And then observer. The signal strength will change the state of the rest on dust and the observer will, will detect it. And since it has the signal strength of 2, it's going to change it 2 times. And that's how this works. We're going to change the state twice so that it attracts and then extends back. Now, the reason why this has to be inverted is because we're going to have two observers here. And then a sticky piston, and then an observer here. Same thing for here. This door is basically symmetrical, except for the top and a bit for the bottom here. Now, this is too uh, an obvious, is too power to these pistons here. And for the closing, uh, as this gets inverted, it will only pulse it at a second. I mean, when it turns off. So when it turns off, so uh, this resonant block will go to here, and then this piston will track, and then this here will extend back. And for the opening, this is going to retract, and then this piston will extend and give another pulse. You might think, uh, if it's like that, can it be a normal piston? And the answer is no, because uh, quite frankly, this observer to this sticky piston is actually timed so that this observer does not interfere with this sticky piston. If it were to be a normal piston, then at the opening, this would actually two tick it, two tick, and then this block would be here. We don't want that. We want it to be up here. So this has to be a sticky piston. 
Let's go. Now we're going to uh, do the bottom. Quite a few bottom poses. And oh, by the way, I just realized something. I'm sorry. Uh, this here should be 16, if I'm not wrong. Like the normal items should be 16. Let me see. 8, 11, 12. Yeah, it should be 16. The reason for that is uh, we're going to have normal items here in the furnace, actually. So sorry for that. So anyways, now we're going to, uh, before we place the comparator, we're going to place two observers here. Same thing for here. Two observers. Observer, I'm sorry, comparator here. And then another comparator. Now you want to get your dropper right here and the dust. This is going to power this here at the correct timing. And uh, this block will get retracted and extended uh, from this changing state. So just gonna use this to time it. And it makes the door quite a bit simpler. Because you don't want to set part of this separately, and so I just make use of this block here just to do stuff. Now we're going to place a top off, and then before we do that, this, these are going to be used later. We're going to have compressor dust. Actually, we should place that now. Too many stuff. Okay, sticky piston here. Okay, and observer here. Hopper here. Hopper uh, will, will be used for later because of some other wirings. This door is intended to be a bit faster, so yeah, the resources will be slightly intensive. And uh, now we would have a repeater set to four ticks. A dust here. Now this is just going to do the doubles quite easily, and don't we don't forget to place the the observer in front. So and observer here, just place that. And we have two basic repeaters right here. So this circuit is going to do quite a lot of stuff actually. This is going to do the majority of the bottom, uh, the closing, the opening, all of them. Same thing for here. Hopper. And this needs quite a lot of explanation for that. Actually, it's quite simple, but the working principle is actually very neat. And it's actually quite complicated, though the circuitry is simple enough. But what happens is that since uh, the compressor is going to turn on and turn off, I should place the dust here. I see. The, the compressor is going to turn on and turn off. Uh, it fires the dropper and the observer detects it. It's going to give a pulse. The first pulse is going to give a free tick, and a free tick already works. Basically, let's just sim simulate it. Free tick. And then. Oh, it's going to fire it. Uh, anyways. Right. Yeah. So it's going to. So it's going to give a free tick and a free tick works here, like this. Simple. Oh, I must have missed out. 
Yep, I must have missed out something. Yep. Yep, I placed up so random. So, after this, the pistons are going to be here. Uh, we need that, don't care about that. So, uh, this piston at the first stage is going to retract and the doubles fire. Nothing else fires. And when the comparator turns off, this has another pulse here, so this observer here. And it extends back. It powers the hopper. The hopper does, do, does two stuff. Two things, I mean. First thing, this game. It's going to one ticket. And you might realize something. Is that this comparator. Oh, the lag. Excuse me. I mean, excuse that. Uh, this comparator is going to turn on. It's going to send one pulse already. What happens is that this observer goes to this observer. It's going to fire the drop hopper again. And it gives the second pulse. And these are these two pulses are timed perfectly to give this this a long pulse. Because a four tick doesn't work here actually. You need at least a five tick. And you would immediately see what happens during the retraction. So if I give a pulse long enough. It does this and if you were to give it a four tick it actually doesn't work it works like this there we go the bottom does not retract the piston now this is quite essential because giving it a post long enough would save a lot of circuitry and in fact you can have another configuration of how it works. Uh, I did show that in my first video actually, uh, where you can basically just have, let me just set it up, the triple here, okay. just say the triple is extended here. I'm going to alternate, alternate this repeater a bit. Actually, So you can alternatively you can do something like this. One ticket, two ticket, one ticket. Oh, and also get this to right here. Oh, uh, and a four ticket. Yep. So we're gonna do that again. One ticket, two ticket. So it would not dirt basically. Uh, yeah, this configures like this pulse configuration works, but it's just a lot more harder, and we don't really have enough space. We only have one white space actually, and I just squeeze this circuitry in. So yeah. So the challenge is just to give a long pulse and to stop right here. So it does like this. Now you see that it needs two fine pulses. One is like this, and then another one is just find this again. Just up, just pulse it twice, and yep, and that's it. Now, the cool thing about this is that the dropper hopper is actually quite important, and uh, it will soon become apparent uh, for actually the final circuit. Because a 4 tick would be too long, while as a 3.5 tick would actually be just enough. And uh, yeah, I'll explain that maybe later. So, we're left out with this, and we need to part the size now. And to part the size, it's, quite, it's actually quite similar to this in here. This is why. This has to be a hopper here, yes. We don't want to power it. 
the sticky piston. So I block here, and then three observers like this, two more like this, a hopper, and you just get a hopper here, hopper here, and then an observer here, and we're going to use a lamp. The lamp will be used later, not a spawn egg. This is going to require these with a bit of delay. Yeah. So this delay is actually quite sufficient to let this sticky piston retract the block and then to go back to this piston. Yeah. So that's why we need a few delay. And it's actually necessary because we don't have other place, like we don't have other ways to power it. We can power the top pistons right away because we haven't sorted out this piston yet. And if we power it straight away, then basically what will happen is that this block gets left out during the opening, and this is going to retract, and then this piston is going to retract later. And what happens is, is that it cannot retract this block. So it basically, it doesn't work. So we cannot power it right away. We need to power it with a few delay again. So we're going to go straight to the top actually. And the sides are not going to be powered now, quite frankly. Uh, this is because there are a lot of similar occasions that can happen with the top. Because the top actually has quite a few circuit to basically just accommodate for the sides and basically the side is going to be controlled by the top directly so we're going to have a sticky piston here an observer here and the your concrete powder or gravity affected block it can be gravel sand or whatever now this is important because later you can see in here it will be a, there will be an observer to this hopper but you need a medium to go through it, so you need a solid block. A concrete powder works the best. Same for sand and gravel. But yeah, you still need a pulse up here, so we're going to do that now. And this is actually going to use it. And this lamp is just to give this piston a double pulse. Yeah. We're going to link it to this piston right here a resto block and we're going to use this resto block for two hopper clocks actually because the top is actually quite a bit complicated no, actually it's not really that complicated but it relies mostly on hopper clock timings to make it work and I just settle with that so the first hopper clock is going to be here second hopper clock is going to be here that's quite obvious to place four normal items. Any items actually you don't need to care. For here we're going to place some special some special items and the configuration is again is again important. So two shovels here and then four snowballs here. Uh I think it's back up to six here. Wait is it four? No it's two. Or just two? Two here actually. And then four here. I might have to check that and see. Yeah. So two non-stackable items, four uh, normal items stack up to sixty-four, and two uh, items stack up to sixteen. And uh, this is basically the trip a triple that is uh, discovered by me and. discovered by me, but then I use it with a long clipper to do a long stuff. So 
so I'm going to show you how you can deal with some of the stuff. So uh, we're going to actually let's just complete this before I do the I'm so good. So comparator, observer block here, and this observer for later, dust, and we're going to place a portal repeater for later, and of course the observer for later again. Observer here, observer here, observer here, observer here, and we finish it off like this. Good, just going to do exactly the same thing here. Now, this is actually the whole triple already. The triple is based on hopper clocks, and yeah, it's quite funky. just re relies on uh, signal strength and it is powered and to get some unstackable item come on just stop it there we go so if we give it quick enough the pulse quick enough we see is that it will do the triple right away. Come on. Yep. So uh, we just take out this item. Actually. You can see it does some of it, some bit of self retraction. Yeah. And all you need to do is to actually just pulse it one more time. And actually just place a shovel, shovel there before. Same thing for here. Yeah. Now, uh, there's a reason why you would not have a shovel here, and that's just because this force is going to be useful for later. There'll be a dust here, and some treasure tool here. That would be some amount of delay, and it actually takes some delay from this hopper clock, and it will be useful later. Everyone's surprised is actually to control the bottom. I did explain that in the extreme aging video, but to give you more context about that. Yeah. Now there are a couple of directions this circuit goes, so I'm going to be one of them. I'm not going to be according to time actually. So from here, we're going to take a comparator. And then a two tick actually. We need a two tick because if it's not a two tick, then this doesn't fall fast enough. The sand doesn't fall fast enough, and this two tick, like I mean, this would not power through this block. So we need a two tick here. Up right here, this is to power this here. So you can see that the sequence are actually quite different. For the top and for the bottom. Actually, I haven't built the bottom yet, so I will explain the whole sequence later. Now, okay, so I, I need to build a lot more stuff to explain the whole circuit because it will look more familiar and more easier to understand. So, I have here. Two observers, hopper here, observer here, and also I'm going to place this here because I always forgot this. So this here is going to go to this dust here, and uh, I need to fit in that hopper up here. Oops. 
server here and then somehow replacing this here there we go put in our server there right so this controls the top folded double already now we're going to control the side double and I actually control it a bit already back here and the remaining part is just this here so I'm just going to do the side double itself and to control the bottom fold double we first part this already this is going to give the first pulse the second pulse uh, actually the fold the pulses is going to be from this faucet here to these observers down here so you need a dropper here and then two observers right here and then place a block if I could place it of course there Th that should be it hopefully <laughs> if I remember often And for the final thing, compressor here, observer here, this is going to just power the sticky piston that gets pushed out. And then observer here, and a block here. Quite simple. So uh, the forward doubles are actually all working. And now it's time for explanation of how, like, what the circuitry work, like how the circuitry is going to work. So the top and the bottom works in different fashions. Let's explain the bottom first. So uh, ignore this block. This block would be. Like this is going to pulse two times. You should know that. <laughs> but anyways, so the bottom, this observer is going to give the first pulse. Now what happens is this line here. This is a four tick, so it's going to give two pulses. So the first pulse, uh, you can see it's going to do this, and after two tick of delay, it's going to do this. And then uh, the second pulse is just going to do this. Oh crap, not this. <sighs> I can't do the one tick thing, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways. And then this. There we go. So it's going to power this here, but it does nothing. So. And this is the closing sequence. The opening sequence is a bit different. So this pulse here again does absolutely nothing. And then this pulse here, this here, this here. And you can see there is a T flip flop here, a toggle here. And it actually powers through this here. This is observer, two tick observer, and then hopper observer here. And the four item is going to control such that it's going to power this at the later stage because this is not inverted, which means that uh, for the opening it's going to be slower to turn on than the closing to turn on. So it's going to apply this. So for the closing, it does not power because it's a toggle. For the opening, it's going to power. So this is how the bottom works. So the bottom for the double relies on the top, basically. For the top forward double, it works quite differently. Now, one thing to mind is that uh, when this retracts, it's not going to pulse this hopper. So yeah. Now the closing, uh, this is going to fire first because this is a hopper call. It immediately fires. So it's going to fire this here. And this faucet 
is going to do its stuff. So again, you can see uh, this is without delay and this is a two six of delay from this observer. So again, it's going to work in a similar fashion. This here, this here, and then and the second pulse is going to do this. And that's it. That's the whole cold closing done. And of course, we need to push the block back. Uh, to now, pushing the block back is actually another story for the top. You can see that this comparison is going to part the piston here. You can really see it that it's there. So it's going to retract because the actually the comparison parts first. This you can see there is a bit of delay here. So it's going to retract and it's not going to extend back unlike the bottom. The bottom is going to extend but the top it doesn't. It won't extend back until the opening. So the opening, this is a hover cock, it's going to fire later actually. So what it does is actually firing the vortex first. So uh, this thing, this thing here. and then the hover cock is going to fire, it's going to do this. And finally, this comparison turns off and it will cover up to here. So the bottom of uh, the block is going to pulse twice, like it's going to toggle the states. And the reason is quite simple. One is easy to do that, and second, it's going to control this piston here. So it's actually quite important to do that. But the top it doesn't have to. So it's much more simpler just to do this. So you can see even the folded doubles, they have different sequences for the top and the bottom. Yeah. So basically a bunch a bunch of hopper clock timings and creates a bunch of arbor gates basically and controls this for the double which is quite neat now we have done most of the top we just need to do these doubles we don't really have much space left so we're going to take output from two places the exact same place from the left side and from the right side the left side is going to do the pulse and the right side is going to do a double pulse and it will become a hand wide open. So let's just finish off this side because I haven't touched it. Block here. Three observers. Two observers here. Hover. Observer. And then a land. Block dust. Hover. Oh, sorry. Observer. Thanks. Uh, sticky piston. Observer. And then a concrete counter. Oh, and by the way, he's going to have an observer here. This is just to fire these pistons at the correct timing. So closing is going to fire first, and the opening is going to fire, not really last, but fire with a delay, such that the pistons uh, at the opening will retract the block first, before these gets pulled back. One thing to remind is that we can't we can't have a two tick replace this observer here because it's going to actually one tick this sticky piston you just noted because this uh, observer actually uh, updates this piston well actually these pistons is going to update anyways but actually this observer is updating it as well so it up powers with this block and it actually one ticks it and we don't want that to be a one take. Over here. Yep. And observer here. 
take a distance and an observatory. Now we're going to have a two tick and two observers here. Four tick. Four tick here. Observer here. Uh popper here, I mean observer. Down below. And now we're going to finish up this thing. I'll try having place any items. I should do that. Two items. Two Stack up, stack up to 16 items and 4 normal items here and then 4 normal items here there we go and comparison block right here I'm going to do the triple first here before doing the other dust Configuration observer, 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 observer. Four tick here. Later. And then two more observers down here. Dust. Block. Observer. Dust. Center. And now we need more. And that is. Observer here, I'll stack it here. Observer here, oh, sorry, hopper here. I mean, observer here, and find an observer here. Place those resting spot later. Come back in here. Also, I should probably explain some of the concepts for the hopper call. So this is going to pause after the for the double. This is inverted, so it's going to pause later for the closing. But then it's going to fire immediately for the opening. So this is why it's compressed to two Yeah. So again, upper gates, and it works. It's going to pause only two times, and those two times are going to be the usual pauses, just like the bottom actually. So you have no wasted pauses here for the piston powers. You can have wasted pauses if you are going to have a standard sequence, but working with this is actually quite a bit easy. So let me see if I have completed the whole thing. No, I haven't. So again, observer dust here, observer here, hopper here, dust, observer, dropper, normal furnace, and then going to block here first, and then two observers here. So that's going to do the folded doubles. And one final thing for a door is that you need to pose this twice, right? And the way you're going to do it is actually from the top. And I should explain it why. Yeah. Oh, but before that, uh, I need to do the top doubles first. I'm going to place two dust. And uh, this concept is originally not by me, it's by Lum3 and O. Or should I say LUM3 and D0? Yeah, whatever. So basically, uh, this is going to finger pulse it and then do a double pulse to retract the piston. So uh, let me just do it right here. Actually, the concept is quite simple. Uh, he didn't reinvent it, I think. It so, yeah, going to, it's going to do this, and then it's going to do a double pulse here. And the double pulse should be quick enough to do this here. 
And it's going to be uh, two ones and double pulses. Uh, I mean, two. I mean, the double pulses are going to be one six. Yeah, that's my mistake. So, yeah. From one side, I have only left and from the right, doesn't really matter. We're going to have three observers here. Yeah, block. That's going to do the single pulse. And we need a double pulse with a bit of delay, so we're going to get another output from another, another side. Two observers block and then a two tick has to be a two tick block and then a normal tick this is going to fire observers here and the cool thing here rails you can have activated rails or powered rails just has to be rails actually you can have two observers I think but yeah rails seems cooler And also prevents the derpiness of field. Actually, when I when I was building, I did have this issue, but we finally we finally didn't have it because of the delay. So we still need to give the doubles, the pulses, at the ceiling level. So it's going to be quite simple. Two sticky pistons, a uh, normal pistons. I mean. Two observers, same for here, and then yeah, those blocks are going to power the doubles at the ceiling level. And this actually is two ticking with a double pulse. The double pulse is quick enough to fire the retraction. It's exactly the same thing as one ticking a piston and detecting from the body. The same thing. Except we're doing it with the piston head. So, yeah. so that should be the top done. Yeah. Now we're going to have the bottom, and I'm going to explain more here. So the falling edge is going to be here. Now this force is not going to power this. Actually, it's going to power this, but doesn't really matter because this is going to fire it, it first. Before this fires, or maybe actually this fires first, but doesn't really matter. This is going to constantly power it. So yeah. it's going to do the falling edge here. So you can see why this has to be delay, because the falling edge actually means delay, and the bottom means delay for the last two pulses. And we're going to have two observers here. A lamp here. It has to be a lamp. And an observer here. Going to a block. And the size is also going to go to this two tick with two tick here. To a block. Now, I didn't explain in the explanation video with, uh, with me and Christmas. But I'm going to explain here now. So, uh, I said that briefly that this is going to give a double pulse, but didn't really show why. And the reason is that there is only one item in this uh, droplet. But the thing is, the lamp is going to give two pulses, and the two tick uh, should be giving two pulses as well. Going to give it one pulse. Anyways, so actually, it might it might give two pulses due to the fact that it's actually fine. This, but doesn't really matter. The two tick is um, we are using the rising edge, anyways, or the first pulse. So what happens is is that this dropper is going to fire a couple of times, three or four times. But it's going to fire at the first time and, and at, the, at the third time. Why? The reason is because the item comes from this dropper to this hopper. 
and the lamp post, the falling edge of the lamp post is actually too fast. And the item hasn't gone back to the dropper yet. And it already fires. So it's going to do nothing. But then the two tick is here. The two tick basically fires it at the correct timing, where this is going to fire again. And uh yeah. Actually I can test this. Yep, yeah, it's going to give two pulses. The two tick gives two pulses actually. And so there are four pulses. The second pulse gets omitted and the fourth pulse as well. Uh, the reason exactly the same. The drop the item is in this hopper and the two tick fires. And since the item hasn't gone back to the dropper, it won't fire. Now it works quite a bit different in the actual door because of uh, the speed optimizing. So uh, it won't work like two separate pulses, instead it will work in a finicky way. But uh, it works and it's actually quite faster. So, and it's going to derp a bit of, like it's going to derp this piston in and it's going to drop this piston, but it doesn't really matter because uh, this vortex actually doesn't fire at all due to the perfect timings. Well, actually, it's not really perfect timing. It's just the fact that this is going to give a two tick, so it's going to pause this super quickly, and this vortex doesn't even receive an opportunity pulse. This here, basically, the hop, the hopper dropper, is important because this can filter out multiple pulses. And whereas a four tick, uh, you can't really filter out pulses. And the four tick is actually too long. The pulse is too long because uh, this is related to the long pulse actually. If you were to have a 4 tick here, then it would only give a 4 tick actually. This, this is actually not quite enough delay to make the 4 tick to give a longer pulse, like longer than a 4 tick pulse. Whereas the dropper hopper, the 3.5 tick is just enough to give a long pulse. A 4 tick will only give a 4 tick pulse. Because the 4 tick hasn't turned off and you're going to fire at it. So, no, it's not going to do that. So, yeah. And also, this is the reason why you need to have two really tick repeaters here. If you, if you were to have less than a tick, then it won't expand because uh, the pistons here are expanding. And the, pi the pistons haven't realized that. Or, actually, it, it would realize. But it would be too late, and these these can grab the observers of the owner, or it, you know, or this one thing somehow. Yeah, they be using these three ticking pieces here, just to make it not a four tick, and to match up with the three point five tick ball pulse from the dropper hopper. The long pulse relies on this drop armor. And even this here relies on the drop armor. Because if it were to be a 4 tick again, then same story. The 4 tick would be quite a bit too long for it to fire. And it can turn off basically. Or at least it would be much harder to work with. So a drop armor seems to be the best option here. Going to build this again. Sticky piston, observer facing downwards, no piston facing upwards. And of, of course, as I've said that before, this is not going to fire. While well, this detracting piston will fire the non piston. To observe it, land, 
the server block and then sub service and TCP and you need that block and you click start yep. if I'm not wrong that should be everything and I forgot to place a So I think that's about it. Let's see. Yeah. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need to have a further explanation. Uh, comment down below. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.